Welcome back, Alice students, to our virtual classroom experience. I'd like to welcome you to my husband, Fred. What kind of work have you done, Fred, in relationship to these tools? Well, these tools, I've been a carpenter in the trades, uh, going on some 30 years of experience in that area, plumber, electrician, sheetrock. Um, I've done some civil engineering, uh, electrical engineering, and mechanical engineering. So. My field with these tools are just very basic tools here. And of course in the trades, we have much more extensive tools that I'm sure you guys have seen your parents or friends or relatives use in the past. But this is the beginning of uh, just our basic trades and welcome. And since we're studying building and construction, we thought you would like to see his tools. And I'll show you a little better picture here of what they are. Come here, oh, okay, you can stay right there. <laughs> You can see there's Harley right there. Our new addition. Okay. You ready? All right. Now, I'm going to show, just uh, show you what tools I have, just as a real brief description, and then I'll do a small demonstration on uh, screws and nails being applied to a piece of wood. All right. Um, let's start with the basics. You kids. What you do? Steal my pencil? <laughs> the little one's stolen pencil. But anyway, you guys use pens and pencils in school, right? Well, that's we use this. This is actually the heart of everything we do. We can't do anything if we can't mark it and we're figure out our calculations. You know, um, numbers, alphabet. We use all of that information. We need this pen to do that work. Alrighty. Um, first, we have a hand saw. And I, I don't know how many of you kids have seen or you had your hands on one, but they're a, a great tool in our trades. What you guys have to be watch out for, what you have to watch out for is the sharp teeth. This could cut wood, but it could cut your hand just as easily. So when you use this, you must think of safety first. Also, something I do not have here, that I should, but I do have my safety glasses on my head. See, and these are safety glasses, all right? Um, so anytime you work with tools, try to remember safety glasses and even a, a mask, which right now, you know, with our virus that's going around, we all should be wearing masks when we're out in public, right? Well, we do the same thing in trades. So we don't breathe in sawdust and fill up our lungs. All right. The saw, the wood, right? Not that you haven't seen anybody do this, but anyway. Anyway, just to give you a real quick shot, that's all we're doing is cutting into the wood. Uh, if we had make a rafter or a, a stud that had to be changed in the wall, this is what we would do to get, get to the size that we need. All right, I'm going to set that down. Always put your tools away when you're done. Don't leave them hanging out. Don't leave them so you can trip on them. Or, God forsake, have an, a friend or a relative trip over your tools. It's the last thing you want to do. Remember, safety first. And if you guys do get hurt with your tools, no matter how minor it is, make sure you go tell mom and dad that you got hurt and you need something taken care of right away. Alrighty. Now, from there, this is just a framing square. We use it for different purposes. Some of it's for roofing. Some of it's just good old common sense. Of, you know, I don't trust myself to draw a line. If I had to draw a straight line, that's probably what it would look like. I use this to make a nice straight line. See that? Now I know where to cut. Okay, framing square. A level. If I want to make sure whatever I was building for instance, I can actually take this, you see right here, there's little bulbs in those vials full of fluid and there's a bubble in there. Anyway, if I wanted to know how level it was, I just set this on there and watch that bubble find its location. Then I know if I need to make an adjustment. Alrighty, um, next, we have a sledgehammer. 
Now this isn't for hitting your friend's head or your sister or your brother. This is for working on projects only, for breaking up concrete or driving a, a big bolt into something, okay? But it's not used for hitting somebody's whatsoever. Same with a framing hammer. It's a great tool to use. Carpenter, electrician, all of us in the trades. We have to have a hammer. Well, just I have everything, but this is what we'll find on this, and I'm tape, tape measure as well. Alrighty? And when you swing a hammer, something you must think about. This this guy back here. It's for pulling nails out of wood, you know. For instance. Okay, you saw me drive one. Now how do we get it out? You could use pliers, but why not use the other part of the end of the hammer to remove it? If you could put it into the ham wood with a hammer. You should be able to take it out, right? Of course, I let that go. But there it is, right? Okay. That hammer is great for everything. But what you have to be aware of is right here. When you swing a hammer, you swing it and you come back here and you hit yourself right in the head. All right? Excuse me. <coughs> hit you in the head. And chances are you could be taking yourself to the hospital. <coughs> The other thing you have to watch out when you swing a hammer. Always know what you're hitting. One is, here's your hand. Well, I'm holding this nail down, right? And I want to hit that hammer. I'm going to hold this nail in such a way that most of my hand's out of the way. I'm going to tap it, right? See that? Then I'm going to come back and find the right angle and make sure nobody's behind me, okay? And I just go on down, see? Now, a lot of times, people have a tendency of overswinging, <coughs> and they might have somebody looking at them, and they don't realize they're behind their back. This will hit them in the head. <coughs> so make sure there's no one around when you do it, right? It doesn't take much energy to swing to get that nail in. The weight of the hammer will actually do the work for you. All you're doing is giving it guidance, righty? And again, hit tap. Get your hand out of the way so you don't have a big old thumb with a big old red blister. Okay. Now I'm going to set that aside. That's a hammer, framing hammer. All right. Next, um, we have different miscellaneous tools that we use. For instance, this is a file. And that's where you're taking metal and taking sharp edges off metal, right? So, you just run this across it until it smooths out. <coughs> Excuse me. Next, we have a flat blade screwdriver. Why do they call it flat blade? Well, it's pretty simple. See the end of that? That's a flat blade screwdriver. And for that, we take screws that have what they call a slot or a slotted driver. Okay. We put that in there and we just turn it, right? So again, Slot it or flat blade screwdriver. Alrighty. Next, I have a, what we call it a trade, it's a Phillips screwdriver, but Phillips is just a trade name, basically. But what it really is, is a crosshead driver. See the cross in it? If you look at this real, you see a line this way? A line this way, and a line that way, right? So, it makes for a good driver, putting a screw into wood, for instance, or taking it out of the car. Uh, but that's called a crosshead screwdriver. Again, you hear moms and dads and other people call it by the name Phillips. That's just, again, a trade name. Um, next, this is a what they call a center punch. All right. Uh, a lot of times we use this for when I go to hammer, in, hammer into metal and I'm about ready to drill into it. I'll take this center punch. I'll find out where I want to uh, make a mark, for instance. I'll, I'll use the tools here. 
So I'm going to draw that, use that square to draw a straight line, right? And I want my mark right there. So I want to know exactly where it's at. So this helps me find center. Next, the center punch. I'm going to put it right where the lines intersect. You'll you hear that word in the future, intersect, where two lines cross each other. Okay, so I find it, put it on that location. Take my hammer now. There we are. We got a nice point. And what we can do with that, with that point right there, uh, it put an indentation in the metal, is what it did. See, there's a sharp point right here. A very sharp point on the end of that. And I put it right there, and I use the hammer to make that indentation. But what that does now is I'll take my battery, what they call cordless driver drill. All right, and what we're gonna do is, you can take this and you can put on metal and you can turn it on and you see it drives everywhere, right? That's what we don't want. What we're gonna do is hit the spot that we want the hole at, exactly. So I turn my little light on, find the indentation. It's locked in place, right? Straight up and down and just begin driving. Now you don't need to turn the switch on at high power. High power, you just ruin the drill bit. See, that's what I'm talking about. See, that's real high. What I do is I use the switch to regulate the speed of my driver. See that? Slower is good. Like less is better. Well, slower is just as good. All right. Anyway, now we have a hole in our metal. That's all we did. That's what that center punch is for. Okay. You saw now the cordless drill with the drill bit in it. And this is a great tool that we use all the time. Then I have an impact driver. And it, it's just that. Hammers away. It drives a one pinch screw in. We have drill bits we use in the industry. They have drill bits for metal and drill bits for wood. Okay. Then we have a wood chisel for removing material out of wood that we don't want. We have a chisel, metal chisel, for working away at whatever we want, you know, to get it out of our way. We have hand pliers. These hand pliers are adjustable. They're great. It's a multi-use tool. We have needle nose pliers. And you have to be careful with these. You can use these for just picking up things, you know. That's great. But there's also a set of cutters down here you have to keep your fingers out of. Okay, but it'll cut wire. These are wire snips, wire pliers, but wire snips. Use those in the electrical field a lot. I'm sure you guys have seen a razor before, but this is a razor blade tool, a utility blade. All right? You know you have to be very careful with those. Very, very careful. Always put it back in when you're done there's you're working you're finished put it back in so no one gets cut these are plumber adjustable pliers in the industry nicknames are uh, uh, oh my gosh I got a block in my brain um, channel locks and that's channel locks is a, again a trade name but these are adjustable these are for working on pipes okay that's a big pair. Then we have a smaller pair of locks. We have a C clamp. That's for putting our wood together or anything we want to clamp down. We'll use this and clamp our material down, right? Here, I have an angle grinder. That's how I cut my metal. Uh, cut my metal anytime I want smaller pieces, I use it. I made this last night using this. Took me about a whole five minutes and I was done. I need to cut several of those. <clears throat> this is just a larger level, like this one. It's just this is a bit larger, much larger for the fill. Okay. Anyway, uh, let's get that. Okay, Fred. What? Okay. Anyway. Uh, Oh, my bucket for when I go on a job site anywhere, I always carry a bucket of all the tools that I use. 
so I never have to make 100 trips back to a vehicle to get my tools. This has done me great. Anyway, it's time to get a closing. Your teacher's telling me, cut it short. So it's about as short as I can do it. Um, you guys have a great day. Thank you, Fred. See you guys later. Bye-bye.